God's people said, Amen. Amen. There was a lady friend of mine. Her name was Mrs. Willow. Some of you might remember her. Her husband owned the Willow Stockyards many years ago in Moose Jaw. And he'd go to hockey games and cheer and holler and yell and praise the Lord. And she became, or not praise the Lord, praise the hockey team and just say, oh, isn't that great hockey? And she became a Christian. And she started praising the Lord. And he said, honey, you shouldn't be doing that. He says, you holler and yell at the hockey game so I can yell in church for Jesus. <laughs> and she did. And she'd get blessed and she'd take off around the church and say hallelujah. And she was in my congregation in Winnipeg a uh, few years ago, uh, quite a few years ago. And uh, I thought, how am I going to keep this lady quiet? Because I knew she was going to shout and holler and take her off around the church. And it was a new church, a lot of new Christians. And uh, I said to my mind, I know what I'll do. I'll have her pray. Now, that's like saying stick them to a dog. And so she started praying, and she got blessed. And she started, oh, I mean, she is in the spirit, beautiful. And... Then she sat down and one of the new converts said, hot dog, grandma, that's good. Give us some more. <laughs> the new converts had never seen anything like that. And they thought it was wonderful. Well, afterwards, they just surrounded her with the love of God. Well, today, we want to praise the Lord and give him the honor and the glory for all that he is doing and all that he does. And I want to begin by reading to you uh, some Psalm number eight. O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, and from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foes and the avengers. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hand. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the fields and the birds of the air. Remember that, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And all God's people said, Amen. Oh man, I should don't want you in my ball team. It's, and all people said, Amen. It's all right to shout in this church, Kelsey. Okay, amen. Amen. Well, um, it's great to be back uh, with you again. And uh, the last few um, months, we have been very busy uh, with CSK, Camping Stick Kids. And uh, we have had many challenges, many growing experiences. Um, and since we saw you last, we're now doing podcasts. If you want to go on podcasts, uh, Camping Stick Kids, uh, that's happening for children. Jolene's doing that with her husband and son, Matthew. And uh, it's just a great thing. And uh, we're getting a lot of hits on that. And then in March, I was down at the homeschool convention in uh, South Carolina, in Greenville, South Carolina, with 11,000 homeschoolers. And uh, that, again, was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, one of our greatest experiences was when we were in Dallas, Texas, uh, with 250 boys. Uh, torrential rain all day long. And when the sirens would go off to get out from the lightning and the thunder, we'd run into a shelter, and that was over. We'd all go out. But we were teaching them how to love Jesus and what it meant to give their heart to Jesus. And I won't go into all the details, but if any of you follow our ministry and our books, what we teach, it teaches how to rescue these boys and bring them to Jesus. And uh, then the most, one of the most exciting recent things is, and I'm going to ask our guy on the video back there or on the tent, there should be a picture of Mortlach. We were there in June, and uh, I'd like to bring that up. I hope you got that. Uh, Kelsey and I worked on it last night. Yeah. You know who that is? You know who it is, Joshua. Yeah, Marlon's grandson, Eric. Eric was the, one of the most wonderful little helpers. He worked all day long with Doreen. And, oh, he made, I mean, he was marvelous. He never complained. He never did anything other than serve. And that was all day long. And it was wonderful. Should be one more, more like, where is that? Yeah, do you recognize those guys? 
and I want to thank Jocelyn and her sister Marlis and the Munchas from Gull Lake and Doreen and I were there. We shared the gospel with over 200 people and the Gideons handed out around 50 Bibles. And I want Doreen to come and just share a brief story about Mortlach. And that's part of what you just did. That was June the 15th, I think. My wife Doreen, in case she, some of you don't know who she is. <laughs> okay, you can hear me? Well, as Eldon said, all day long, I sat at the back because my balance is not too good anymore or my sight. But I praise the Lord anyway that I could be back there and putting the beads and leathers on the stick that they used to tell, that we used to tell the gospel. Anyway, at the end of the day, I was able to help break down and everybody was doing that and so there were boxes and things all over the place and and for some reason I had gone up near the front to get something and uh, this uh, middle-aged man came by and uh, he was looking at all these boxes and I think we still had our sign up of comic stick kids and he said what's this all about and um, I said, well, what it's all about is that Jesus loves you very much. And we are the Camping Stick Kids Ministry. We minister to children and adults. And um, we give away free hockey stick, or I called it a camping stick, and uh, a little pamphlet. So, um, I, and I said, I'll give you the the uh, camping stick, I just have to tell you the story. You've heard us talk about that many times. <laughs> so anyway, he said, story, what kind of a story? And I said, well, it is a gospel story uh, about Jesus. Okay, I'll let you tell me that story. So I told him the story using the color, five colored beads and when I was done telling him about Jesus and his love and what he'd done for us, I went back to the gold bead, which is the first bead about heaven. And I called him by name because he told me his name. And I said, do you know for sure if something happened to you today, not that it would, but if it did, do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? And he sort of got very somber, and he said, I sure hope so. And I said, well, you know, the Bible tells you, you can know so. And uh, I, then I shared First John with him, that you can know for sure that you're going to heaven if you've asked Jesus into your heart. And um, anyway, um, I said, would you like, are you ready to do that? And he said, okay. <laughs> so we prayed. And then he, he wanted to tell me his story. And it was very short. I am 47 years old. I was brought up in a Christian home. But as a young man, went far away from God all these years but the last five years it has been very hard for me and um, lots of troubles and but he said along these five years there have been three I think two or three times that someone had shared the gospel with him again and he said and who would think that I'm standing here today and accepting, you know, my faith back. And I almost started crying because I said, you know, I have a daughter, we have a daughter, who when her twin sister um, passed away almost four years ago now, she became very full of grief, full of anger, 
and she is still wanting to be disconnected to our family. And I said, it is just heart-wrenching. And I said, but you have given me hope today that even though she's gone far away from God, she never really accepted the Lord along the way in her young life. And I said, I have hope. I've, we pray, of course, we pray for her every day and have the faith that she will come back, but this was a special blessing to me. So I just praise the Lord for the opportunity to t tell you that story today. And I pray that if any of you have, have children, perhaps, who have wandered away, that this will give you hope that they will come back to the Lord and serve him. Thank you. Oh yeah, before he left, before he before he left, Alden, come here. <laughs> I just I just went like this. I I never you know I mean in a public like that you don't always touch people, <laughs> but I just pointed my finger and I said you know, called him by name and I said. Jesus is there all the time. And he just... Oh, yes, and his countenance was just glowing. It was sort of like he, he got it. Amen. You know, he just got it that, that he had really, really been saved. Praise God. Amen. Thanks, Jereen. Yes, I was going to ask you, come on up to the mic, Jocelyn. I didn't want to embarrass you, but come on up. All right, speak loud. Yeah, those, that was a wonderful day because that's just a couple of stories that happened. And uh, I, I was going to ask Joshua to share that, so I'm glad you obeyed the Holy Spirit because that little guy, uh, I think he prayed to receive Christ too, that he started praying. And she thought, like she said, pray for Grandma, but she prayed for him. Isn't that how the Holy Spirit works? Isn't that how the Holy Spirit works? It sure is. So thank you for sharing that. Um, all right, where am I? Here we are. Yes, uh, last two weeks ago, last, end of July, uh, I was at the uh, Gospel Light uh, Bible Camp in uh, Riding Mountain Park in Manitoba with 50-plus children, 8 to 12 years old. And uh, one of our workers, Ed Stinson from Regina, used to farm down at Pontex, uh, they were there. And Ed was the chapel speaker, did an excellent job using all the camping stick kids' materials. And I was basically there, an observer, and it was wonderful to watch all these kids. And we were trying to pull up a, a, a song where these, uh, now i got to say this respectfully, but these kids were all Mennonites. And uh, they came from four Mennonite churches, two from Brandon and Justice and Boys of Vain. Well, you want to hear them sing. The boys sat on one side and the girls on the other side. And, and they got singing and they'd stand on the benches. And, and they were singing, I Choose Jesus, uh, one of the songs that Jolene wrote. And we tried to pull it up uh, on there, but we're going to play it at the end of the service, okay? Uh, whoever's back there on the sound. But uh, they were phenomenal to just hear these kids sing in harmony. And three of those counselors heard Ed the first night talking about his walk with Jesus and how he come to serve God. And they said to him and then to us later, God has touched our hearts and we're off to college and so forth this fall, but we want to go into full-time service for God. Wow. That's what it's all about. It's just telling people who Jesus is and what he wants to do. Well, I share all that with you. Uh, to let you know what God is doing through your um, 
help with uh, Campus Stick Kids and our ministry, God's ministry. And the, uh, then I was going to give you a whole bunch of stats uh, that has happened over the last year. Uh, I'm just going to give you a brief, res quick thought. But God is opening up the doors for us. As you know, we're with Trail Life USA. That's the branch of the Boy Scouts. And there's, we serve 55,000 boys in all 50 states. And uh, we're starting to form in Canada as well and uh, working out of Red Deer, Alberta. And, and God is moving. We just got notification two months ago. Chick-fil-A, you know who they are, the big sandwich people in the states. Uh, they now want to look at partnering with us to do work with their camps. They serve 35,000 girls and 35,000 boys in their camps. And we're just going, wow. And so on our webpage and on our, uh, um, I guess that subscriber page, we're over at 116,000 that are following us. And most of them come from India, the Philippines, and uh, the United States, and some in Canada. But we're just praising God for that. So I say all that to say, that I want to share with you this thought, that we are to walk worthy with the Lord, and that we must please the Lord. And that comes out of Colossians uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 10. Some of you are wondering if I'm ever going to get there. But Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. And walk worthy of the Lord. And uh, it says simply this. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, we do pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and the love of your and the love that you have for all the saints. You were singing about that, Kelsey, and that um, and that the love that will spring from the hope that's stored up for you in heaven, and that you have already heard about in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you all over the world. The gospel is producing fruit and growing. Amen. I'll say it for you. Uh, and just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all this truth, you have learned it from Epaphras and our dear fellow servants, who is the faithful minister of Christ, and on our behalf, and also to all of you and your love in the Spirit. And so for this reason, since the day we have heard about you, we have, stopped, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge, there you go, Pastor, the knowledge of his will through the all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order, now get it, that we may what? Some of you got your Bibles open to it. Walk worthy. Walk worthy. Yes, that we may walk worthy, walk, may live a life worthy of the Lord and be praise him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. And, there, and that's what I wanted to touch a wee bit on that today, about walking worthy before Almighty God, and that we can walk worthy. And he wants us to walk worthy before him. Now, um, I say that because Paul is instructing the Colossian people here uh, to live in, in such a way that uh, people would see how they live and how they walk as Christians. And he was trying to say to them, you as Christians should be dedicating your lives to a living God which pleases him. Now I ask you to ask yourself this question, is your life pre pleasing God? Psalm 8 says, O Lord, our Lord, and I read it to you this morning. How majestic is your name in all the earth. And how excellent is your name in all the earth. Now think of the splendor of creation and the things that God created. So, knowing all of that and what we heard this morning, the question is, why do we worry? Now, I don't know about you, but there's times when I try not to worry, but it's there. And I wonder if some of us sometimes find ourselves worrying. And I would like you to now play that clip from Matthew 6, or Matthew 6, 25, 27, please. And this is basically what I want you to hear and see. Uh, and this is, ties in with Kelsey's first slide that you saw this morning. And uh, see if you pick it up. Go ahead. Our Bible verse today is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27. Therefore I tell you, 
Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Hey everyone, this is Mrs. Steele. Thanks for listening to our Bible verse. You'll hear this and much more on our podcast that releases on April 16th. Can't wait to see you all there. Bye-bye. And that's one of the podcast uh, verses because we do uh, the Bible verse out of Breakout, which I think Josh was using here in your Sunday school. And uh, it's on, on my uh, hiking stick here. But why do we worry? Because God is the king of all the air. And he cares for the birds and he feeds them. And uh, I'm sure he's going to f- feed us. And Doreen has told you about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. But another quick story, when I was traveling with a gospel group out of South Dakota uh, many, several years ago, um, I had gone off in one of the crusades and Doreen had taken all of our children down to Bozeman, Montana uh, on $16. And she had to pay for a hotel and a motel because we thought she was going to be billeted somewhere. That didn't happen. Well, the long story short is when I came back on the airplane, here she comes on, that's when the, uh, you could walk on the tarmac at the airport, and here she comes to Billings, Montana, walking down the tarmac with the four kids. We had uh, one boy and three girls. Walking down the tarmac, and they were all in brand new clothes. And I'm going, did she rob the bank? <laughs> what happened? And she had a new outfit on. And then she told me the quick story of how a lady from the Christian Reformed Church in Bozeman, Montana, uh, had seen her, she said, they'd gone to visit this lady, and she, her husband said, you know, why don't you go and spend some money on those little children? And so his, her wife went out and bought all the kids, all these new clothes. And then he came back and he said, you mean to me, tell me that you went and bought all those children clothes and you didn't buy Doreen any clothes? Now get this. He gave her $500 to go out and buy clothes for herself. I think it was in that neighborhood. That was a lot of money back then. And so here comes my family dressed to the hilt. And I'm coming off the plane. What in the world did God just do? Well, I just tell that story to let you know that God is the king of the air. And if he can feed the birds and he can look after them, that he can look after us. And he does. And I praise the Lord for that. And then if you go back into... uh, 1 Kings 17, 1, 6. I'm not going to take time to read it because we're getting close to shutting this thing down. But what happened there? Elijah went out to the brook, hid in the cave, and what happened? The ravens came and fed him in the morning, and they fed him at night. And how many, how long was that? Anybody know? Preacher, remember this. He fed them. Three years, morning and night. You can read it. It's it's in in the Kings. And they came there every morning and every night. Now, you know where the birds were getting the food? From the king's table. Because back then, the king ate outside and so on. They flew in, helped themselves, and they took it to Elijah. Of course, when that stopped, the brook dried up. Then what did God do? He took them to that widow. Remember the, the oil that never run dry? You know? Do you ever sing that song in Sunday school? The raven's wings went flap, 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 buzz. Down the river they flew. They carried me. They carried bread. The Lord had told them to. And what I'm saying to you today, that God will tell people to help you, to guide you, and to direct you. And he cares so much about you. You do not need to worry. And um, Dream mentioned about our daughter passing away three or four years ago with brain cancer. And I happened to have her uh, bookmark that she had in her Bible. And I picked it up. And, and get this. This is what she had on her bookmark. And remember, she had brain cancer. And it was quite an episode. And we were there when she passed away. But she said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. That's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And I was thinking about that. Why didn't she add the rest of it? To prosper you, to heal you, da, da, da. And it was, 
I know the plans that I have for you. And I got thinking about it. She wasn't worried one iota about her brain cancer because she knew where she was going. And I was there when she passed away and she opened her big black eyes and looked at the sky and was gone. As if the angels just took her. And if only we could imagine. So I'm looking at this not too long ago and she was saying, God, it doesn't matter what happens to me. I know you have a plan for my life. And I could tell you more stories just like I've shared how that I know that God has a plan for me every day. Every day. So why do I worry? Why do I fret? God's not done with me yet. And I know that he fills us with his glory. And that the name of Christ is being lifted up. And so I'm going to ask that uh, this, uh, I just got to say this one more thing that I, we had queued up for you, the Mennonite kids singing uh, this song that uh, they're going to play here now and my closing marks. But uh, unfortunately, it worked on Kelly's uh, computer, but or Kelsey's computer was not working on yours. But we're still going to play the song. I think you've seen it before. And it's called I Choose Jesus. And when they come to that uh, course, I Choose Jesus, uh, if you know it, join it with it. Because I Choose Jesus. Yeah, I've got concerns. When I start to worry, I said, no, 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 no. Satan, get behind me. God's in charge, not me. I don't know the plans. And I could tell you just recently I had some things in my life that kind of went, whew. And God said, uh-uh, I got this covered. And if you want to know about it, talk to me afterwards. But uh, hit that song, please. Well, there's the Mennonite kids. But I think we're going to hear the other version. choose Jesus. Why? Because he's Lord of all creation. And so don't worry, folks. I don't care if you came in here with any burdens or worries. They're all gone because of the blood of Christ. And Jesus has taken it all at the foot of the cross. So whatever that worry you might be having, let it go. 
because Jesus said, I have paid it on the cross. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for the opportunity to just share your love. Thank you for the opportunity that we can tell that you love us. And Lord, we don't need to worry because you do feed the birds and the animals and you look after them and we're much more precious than they are. And you even said that uh, Solomon was not dressed near as brightly as the fields of the lilies and Lord, that you just clothed them. And Lord, I thank you that you provide for every step of the way. And now I give you the praise. Bless this church. Bless the pastor and the congregation as they look forward to the fall. And may they know that you are with them and that they have chosen Jesus to represent you in this community. And that is the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Back to you, Kelsey.